Hey guys. Alright, so tonight I wanted to cover a couple extra things that didn't really fit into other lectures, um, but are kind of like a little more advanced topics um, that I wanted to go over with you guys. So in the background, first we're going to go over um, what are called scenes in SketchUp. And um, scenes, I've recently found out that if I turn this window off with my uh, face in it, it doesn't go away for you guys. So. Um, Alright, so scenes are right here in SketchUp, and if you don't have access to them directly, you should be able to go to Window Default Tray and Scenes and enable them here. Um, if you don't have this tray, check to see if um, the default tray is actually hidden right here. Um, if it is, you can just toggle it back on with Show Tray. Alright, so... Um, yeah, so I've got this SketchUp model, and so to actually start a scene, um, a scene is basically sort of a state save where you can place a uh, camera and then look around from there. So I've got this model here, and this is something that I, it was a personal project of mine that I was kind of messing around with a while back. Um, and it's one of those cases where the, mo the more detail that you include in your project, the better it looks. And so I've got a little sm bunch of little small details in here. Um, repeating elements as you can see here um, but they all combine together to actually make a very strong good looking project um, so anyway um, make sure you do detail because um, it can actually help improve the quality of your project a lot so um, what I'm going to do to actually place a scene is I'm first going to go to this button right here which is position camera and if you click on the surface where it says on facing group or wherever it might be it's going to place your camera there now it's going to switch to this eye tool and it's going to let me look around so I can click and drag this and you can get a good feel for kind of the space of what's going on here. Um, so once I've got that, if I'm, let's say that this is the scene that I, this is the camera spot that I want to save. So what I can do is I can hit this plus on add scene and it's going to save a scene record in here and then also get that scene bar at the top as well. Oops, go back that way. Okay, so, um, and then if I want to do another one, one of the options you do have here is this walk, so you can actually use this to walk around, it's kind of twitchy, um, and then we'll switch this back, okay, and then I can create another scene here, and now I can jump between these two scenes just by double clicking, um, setting up scenes, and... Um, enabling them is something that will, that will, when we get into rendering, enable you to create points where you can continuously render a good looking scene um, and have, and if you need to make changes you can go back to it without you know any kind of crazy setup. Um, so they're pretty handy in that way and then additionally you can also use scenes to string together um, navigation points for an animated walkthrough. So they do have their uses where you can actually I don't I don't know if it's going to let me do that. You can jump through scenes in an um, automated way, but uh, I may have moved. Um, so anyway, um, scenes are pretty handy for that. I do want you guys to set up a scene. Once you have a scene for your project, you'll go to File, uh, choose one of the scenes, File, Export, and 2D Graphic, and you will actually export um, one, whatever one of your scenes is to me. Um, um, sorry, actually no, for your project you guys are going to be doing the other thing I need to show you. Um, so never mind that. But um, So anyway, that's setting up scenes. Let me drag in another window now. Um, so I have a new file here. And one of the things that you guys have to do for, um, for this project is you have to create some sort of reusable component for it. Um, and so what I wanted to show you guys in this is kind of what I call the profile drawing method. So right here, I'm going to draw this line up, and I'm going to draw it up about, just from the center here, I'm going to do about six inches. And then I'm going to come over this way, we'll do another, we'll do four inches, just so I have some extra space. And I'm going to do that. So this is a profile. What I'm going to use it for is I'm actually going to use it to trace um, with the follow me thing, just like I did the door frame. I'm going to trace a cup with it. Um, and so... Let's say I, let me grab, oh, it hit my window again, uh, toolbar, turn that back on, okay, so 
I'm just going to freehand this with the arc tool, and I'm going to go from about here to here, and just get a good angle right there. Um, maybe I'll scale this line right here in. Um, uh, sorry, move this line in just a little bit. I think right there is good. Okay, so once I have that, I can offset this in. Um, let's say uh, a quarter of an inch is fine. Um, and then I'm just going to complete this line, complete this line, and then erase the rest so that I end up with kind of this little shape right here. Um, and so this is going to be the profile of the cup that I draw. And then I'm going to use the circle tool, hold down shift so that I lock it in the center here so it's vertical. And I'm going to draw a circle right there. Now, these have to be touching just like the other ones that I did the uh, door demo with. And so I'm going to use this to actually rotate this shape around. So if I go to the, uh, let's see, follow me tool, click on this surface. And this was one of those things that sometimes it just bugs out too. Um, but it looks like we got it that first time around. Um, so real simple way of making a cup. Um, another option is, let's say I wanted to add a mug to this. So I'm just going to draw another shape here and um, we'll group this, triple click on it, make group. Um, actually, one thing you can do is you can do soften smooth edges. Um, and where did that open up? Behind my head. Okay. And if you check on this softened coplanar, it usually gets rid of any extra faces or duplicated faces um, that are showing extra lines just to kind of clean things up. Um, so let's grab this. I'm going to center it on that axis right there on the green axis. And I'm just going to move this over here. Now, this is live geometry right here, but because I group that, uh, <laughs> um, because I grouped that now I can actually work with this on top of there without any any worries there um, and the next thing I want to do here is I'm just gonna draw a line right here a line right here I'm actually gonna move this one down a tiny bit and then we'll do another arc right here uh, we might just actually pull this out. That's good. Um, there we go. Okay. So we've got those two li or that set of lines right there, and then I'm going to move this away just so I can work in that space a little bit. Um, another circle tool. I'm going to hit the right arrow on the keyboard and lock it into position. And then I'm just going to come in here, get kind of like the right size for this, um, and kind of work my way down in here too so I can see what I'm doing. Um, and we can flatten this off on this edge. This is just to kind of make it look a little fancier. Um, and then I'm going to have to move this up so we get that touching. And that should work. So we'll go to Tools, Follow Me. And again, we'll get this, oop, ah, sometimes it doesn't like that. Um, so that's one of those error messages you'll get where it just kind of freaks out. Don't worry about it, just redraw it. Um, so there's our handle. And again, um, we'll go to this menu here and we'll check soften coplanar and we'll get rid of some of those extra um, lines that are going on there. Now, one last step that I want to show you guys, this is a cool thing that I haven't quite shown you guys yet um, in any sort of way um, is so let's move this right there so it's touching our cup the faces are overlapping but there's nothing going on there what I'm gonna do with this still selected is I'm gonna right click I'm gonna do intersect faces with model and then if I triple click on it again and bring it out you can see that it's actually drawn those lines right there so if I undo this um, and if we kind of go inside the cup, you can see that it drew a line right here, um, that little blue line. 
um, where this cup actually intersected with that. So it's a real good way of creating extra geometry on your work um, that you can then go in and for what we're doing here um, just delete um, because we don't need that there but it kind of simplifies the model a little bit uh, let's see and then with this one I can actually just hit K and do a right to left select I'm not worried about that one um, and then we'll go back to this triple click to select it move tool lock it in the red direction and snap it to the face um, and then we can cut this double click on the cup and paste in place and now we have one solid set of geometry that's all connected um, so it's a couple steps to get one of those real clean joins um, I think it's worth it in a lot of situations um, and now you've got a little fancy cup um, bowls are pretty much the same thing um, let's move this over here um, so bowls are kind of the same thing I just don't go as tall so I'm going to do four inches here we'll do five inches here um, I don't know what I want to make this bowl look like let's do flat bottom um, and then let's do the hard it no let's do a curved edge again we're going good with that all right so we'll do something like this we'll offset it this way just to show that you don't have to I'll type 0.25. Um, we'll offset it that way just so that I don't have to worry about it. Um, I'm going to do a, you see this line right here? If I move off in this direction, I can get that pink reference line, um, which is just saying, hey, this is. Oh, actually, that's too high. I'm gonna... okay, if I'm doing it like this, I might as well just do this here. Okay, do the arc again. there. Nope, did not close that all the way. Okay, 0.25, and draw that up, and then when I reference this line right here, it'll turn that same pink color, and that's just saying this is perpendicular to um, this little line segment right here, so I'll just do that and delete that part um, again another circle hold down shift to lock it on the blue axis uh, put it right there tools follow me and right there I'm gonna turn that off uh, reverse faces just so that you end up with the right one um, if you're not entirely happy with it you can always just kind of squish it down too um, you know, they are still moldable and kind of reshapeable as you want. Um, so we can make that a group. Uh, plate, basically the same thing. You just go up like a really tiny distance. Um, and then out, let's say, seven inches. This is probably going to be a gigantic plate. Um, so... And in this case, I might not even, we'll do an arc, but then I'm just going to take this down and do another arc and just kind of freehand this. Uh -huh. Oh, oops, drew that off of there. Okay. Go on the face, up to here, there we go, okay, that's on there now. And we can go from here to here, and that's good enough. I'm not going to double check the thickness of your plate edge. Um, so, do that, and again, draw, follow me, and a plate. Oh, um, so this might happen to you every once in a while. If it does, just uh, redraw a line just anywhere, point to point back here, and just erase the line. That should fill that in. Um, and then on this, I don't think we're going to be able to soften those because those are the actual curves of that. Um, so we'll just make that a group. So um, same technique. 
you've got plates, mulls, plates, bowls, cups. Um, if you want to stack things, um, so let's say I, I can take this, lock it in the up direction, do a move copy with control, and then I should be able to do something like um, click there, and then on the keyboard X12, and now I have a stack of plates. Um, same thing with the, oh, that happened over here too. Didn't even see that. Let's fill this in. All right, again, um, move copy with control, lock it to that axis, and I'm gonna have to turn K on just so I can, uh, this might not be a good shape for this. Um, in that case, we'll just have to go and freehand that distance as a guesstimate. So we'll go right there, X12. Now we have a stack of bowls. Um, so, yeah, super quick way to create just sort of some some things to fill a counter. Um, just like everything else in SketchUp, if you want to come in here and then um, steal this blue. Um, and because these are groups, it's not... There we go. Um, it's not necessarily going to work with that, but we'll, um, with just assigning it to one. Um, so we'll just create some fiesta wear here real quick. Um, theoretically, yes, I probably actually could be quicker because I have default colors on these. I could just assign it directly to um, the group itself. Uh, yeah. Oh, should go back there. There we go. Yeah. So, um, yeah, simple process of doing that. Now, let's say that um, for some reason you want to have, like, a stripe going through this cup. Um, so, again, you can take that same method that I did um, the handle on this cup with um, and just draw some extra geometry. So, in this case, like, I might just do a rectangle here, pull it up through the cup like that, triple click, and then we'll move it to, let's say I want the stripe, just below that handle. So we'll lock it in right there. Um, again, right click, intersect faces with select, or sorry, with model. And then I'm just gonna delete everything. You can see that those lines are sitting right there. Um, and then just from experience, I know that I, um, so I've got, uh, let me move the cup. I can actually show you what's going on there. So here's what's left over from that after I did it, all right? And what I want to do is I want to keep that outer ring, but I want to get rid of these inners. So if I double click, oops, double click here, no, okay, fine. Double click on the ring, delete the fill, double click on this, really? What is going on with that? Um, basically, I want to do that with um, what I've got here. So. Um, and probably actually the easiest way is to just, um, well, let's see. Yeah, I know that highlights the outside, so I'll have to do that. Triple click here, still have the outside. This is the bottom, so we'll do a single click. Double click? No. Single click. Double, wait, sorry, double? Yeah, bottom of the cup. Okay, so now we've got those two lines right here, and I can cut them, double click into the cup, paste in place, and now because of that, I actually have this stripe, so I can actually do color, color, um, and then we'll do that right there, and then we'll leave the inside of the cup white. Right click selection here, and just make all that out of color. Um, so. Um, real simple way to model kind of, you know, specific stuff for a project. Um, lamps, lights, that sort of thing, um, kind of same idea, just bigger. So if I draw a shape like that, um, let's do just a little bit of a lip up right there. Arc tool again. Stop doing that. 
Okay, there we go. Um, I can do that. Make one of those kind of crazy lamps my grandma had. Um, and these are, the lamps are a little bit more flexible too, because once you do um, this part, and that's probably tall enough, you can kind of just go, eh, this needs to be taller, stretch it up, needs to be a little bit thinner, stretch it in. Um, and once you're happy with it, um, let's see, the next thing, and usually you want to try and model as much as you can. Um, so we'll do this right here. We'll fill in that space. And then sometimes what I'll do is just to create the lampshade, I'll just do another little bit of geometry here. Um, let's see. Let's do this. I want to just kind of get it right-ish. Um, so this does have to be one giant interconnected space, though. So make sure that you clear out anything else that's kind of missing there. We'll do that. And then we'll, I'll just do a tiny little reference line right here with the uh, tape measure tool, um, pen tool, and just connect. Oh, missed it. And just connect these two sides together. Um, and then we can erase. Oops, not that one. This needs to come all the way in. That's what I was missing. Okay. Um, and just erase these extra bits. And right here. So now if I click on the fill right there, I should be able to get the entire thing. Um, we'll do another circle tool. Bottom. Stretch it out. And tools. Follow me. And, oop, missed that one. Tools, follow me. There we go. Um, oh, that lampshade looks horrendously small um, in comparison. <laughs> um, so, anyway. Um, yeah, if you were doing something more like a cafe, I don't know, let me steal something off Google real quick. All right, so if we wanted to do some kind of more traditional light like this, um, let's see, how would I model that? I'm gonna, I've got it off to my side here. Let me see if I can keep that there. Okay, so let me get rid of that. We'll do something, those look to be about, let's say three feet tall. Um, that bell at the top is probably gonna be, what, four inches across, so I'll do two out. Um, two down and then close it in. We'll have just a tiny gap that I'll offset here with the tape measure. Um, we'll just call that, um, uh, we'll just do an eighth inch. Um, and then, what, that's probably two feet down, two feet. And let me zoom in here and get this line filled up. right there. We'll do our arc tool and just get this taken care of while we're up here. So that part right there. Um, and maybe it's just got a little bit of one of those. Okay. Um, so then down here at this point it looks like it gets uh, let's do another quarter inch over, and we'll have this part stick out, and then let's say we go down 10 inches, nope, I went, oh, I must have measured up from the top or something, stay up here, um, let's see. go 10 inches up from here and then we'll move this up another two and that should be good all right let's throw in a, or a rectangle right here I'm gonna erase that and then we want something pretty narrow that looks like it's probably eight inches across so I'm gonna go four inches out that even still feels big. Um, I might just freehand this right there. And then 
Um, sometimes when it gets screwy, it is just like that where it's just kind of bouncing around. Sometimes it's just easier to draw in a, a face. So I'll just fill this in with a line so I can come back with with the actual arc tool. Um, and that looks about right. We'll take this line, offset it, and I just want a tiny offset because I just need I need enough of a thing to differentiate or to give this the inside space right there. Um, so I'm gonna do we'll do an eighth inch here. And then I'm just going to cut this right here. We don't need all that extra space, and technically there'd probably be hardware in there. All right. So again, same process. I just kind of did that one from the top down. Circle. Um, and what I'm going to do for this one is I'm actually going to lock it um, up arrow on the keyboard to that center axis right there. I build these on the origin because it makes it easy to do that reference. Um, and then we'll just snap it to that point right there. And then again, back to the follow me tool. And reverse faces. Um, we'll do a, I'm not going to find another color for the, oh, I missed that again. That's annoying. Tools, follow me. OK, got it that time. Cool. All right, um, first faces, we'll do this here, here, on that, on that. We'll grab a wood, because that's some kind of wood. Uh, we'll just do that. It's not the right orientation. Actually, that's something else I need to cover tonight. Um, and so there's that light again. I'll fill this in. Oh, I didn't do that on the coffee mug, huh? So we can triple click this, make it a group or a component, whatever works for you. Um, and then this I can copy back into. I want to close the demo project, whatever. Um, so I can copy this into, say, this project right here. And then we can hang these on the rafters or something. And um, let's see if I can get this. Line. It's not going to cut exactly because these were designed for this. Um, right there. And because these are a fixed distance apart, I can kind of reference anything I want to. So I can just go corner to corner um, times 10. And now we've got a bunch of lights populated in there. Um, so yeah, if you make things kind of realistic, it makes it super easy to manage those sorts of things. Um, and then just using that follow me tool technique you can build all kinds of stuff for your project um, and get it to kind of fill in spaces. Um, all right, so yeah, we're hitting about 30 minutes, so I think that's good for this demo. Um, and if you guys have any questions, let me know in class.